nearly a week after revelations about Virginia Governor Ralph Northam's past with blackface first emerged, questions continue about who will lead the state. Democrats have to decide what the future of their party will now look like. In Richmond, Virginia, an unprecedented scandal engulfing the state's top three elected officials. It began last Friday when a racist photo from Democratic Governor Ralph Northam's 1984 medical school yearbook surfaced. I'm deeply sorry. That evening, Northam apologized, but the next day he said he wasn't in the photo, though he said he had worn blackface in 1984, dressing as Michael Jackson for a dance contest. Right now, I am simply asking for the opportunity to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that the person I was is not the man I am today. I am asking for the opportunity to earn your forgiveness. Party leaders at the state and national level have called for Northam to resign. As of today, he has not. Meanwhile, Northam's number two, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, faces his own scandal. On Monday, Fairfax responded to an anonymous allegation of sexual assault, calling the accusation, quote, defamatory and false. On Wednesday, his accuser came forward, Vanessa Tyson, a California professor, providing details of the alleged assault in a statement through her attorney. Tyson says in 2004, Fairfax led her to his hotel room in Boston, where, quote, consensual kissing quickly turned to sexual assault. Fairfax issued a response admitting, quote, a consensual encounter with Tyson, but said he, quote, cannot agree with the description of events that I know is not true. Have you spoken with Governor Northam? Fairfax ignored questions from reporters today in Richmond. Also on Wednesday, Virginia Attorney General Mark Herring admitted to wearing blackface as a 19-year-old college student in 1980. Herring had previously called for Northam to resign. The admission came after a meeting with the state's Legislative Black Caucus. In his statement, Herring said, quote, this was a one-time occurrence and I take full responsibility for my conduct. All three men, once seen as Democratic rising stars, are so far refusing to step aside. If all three Democrats resign, House Speaker Kirk Cox, a Republican, will assume the role of governor. The turmoil in Virginia's capital is just the latest example in a larger reckoning happening across American politics and culture. For more on that, I'm joined by Eugene Scott. He's a reporter covering identity politics for The Washington Post. And Leah Wright Rigor. She's a professor of public policy at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. She's also the author of The Loneliness of the Black Republican. And welcome to you both. Eugene, I want to begin with you here. Um, immediately following Governor Northam's uh, pictures surfacing from that yearbook, there was a collective strong call for his resignation. In the days following, as the other scandals emerged, that subsided somewhat. Unpack for me sort of how that political calculation for Democrats in Virginia has evolved. I think what Democrats in Virginia have come to realize is just the complexity of what is happening in their state at the top levels. You have the three most powerful politicians, all Democrats, all in scandals that a year ago Democrats would have easily uh, called for their resignation over. I think what they have come to realize, though, is that if all three of these individuals leave office, that the most powerful politician and Virginia will be a Republican. And we have to remember that after the midterm elections, there was so much uh, discussion about how Virginia had finally turned blue uh, consistently. And, mm -hmm. and if these three men uh, leave their position, that won't be the case. And I think some on the left are trying to figure out where their values are, what's most important to them, and what's at risk long term. Professor Vigur, I want to ask you about this because we have to separate out some of these cases, right? The, there are allegations of sexual assault in one case and racist behavior in the others. And we should point out that actually uh, California Senator Kamala Harris has called for an investigation into the allegations against Justin Fairfax. But uh, kind of help me draw that line here. We have to remind people this is the party that did force out Al Franken based on sexual assault allegations. How are the Democrats weighing this? Are they treating Justin Fairfax differently? So I think what's part of what's going on right now is that Virginia Democrats are, you know, hunkering down, they're in their war rooms and they're trying to find a way out of this 
really complex, messy situation that has no easy answer. Uh, what is, you know, what is the pathway where we do the moral thing, and where is the pathway where we do the political thing that allows us to maintain power, and including policymaking power? And so, what you're going to, I think, what you're going to see, and what what we've seen so thus far, is that, uh, you know, Northam has has lawyered up, uh, Fairfax has lawyered up, lawyered up, indicating that they both intend to kind of fight and that they both want to keep their positions. Uh, but we have seen increasing pushback uh, from Virginia Democrats, first on Northam in the, in the blackface, but increasingly, just kind of uh, slowly, it's slow moving, but it is coming, uh, we've seen uh, criticism of this, you know, of accusations of, of uh, sexual assault. So I think as that investigation heats up, and particularly around the claims, the, we know that the accuser has come forward and made a very powerful uh, and a very forceful statement that there, that uh, Virginia Democrats, but also the Democratic Party more, much more broadly, is going to have to have a real reckoning, uh, both a racial reckoning, but also a, a gender uh, and sexual assault reckoning uh, in the coming weeks, and they're going to have to do it on a public stage. Professor Rigger, I want to ask you in a follow-up now, the, the party has centered women's rights and minority rights and racial justice as part of their platform, particularly as they try to distinguish themselves from Republicans moving forward. So the longer they take to have this reckoning, does that not take away from their power to later have the moral authority on those issues? Well, the moment that we have, you know, a, a, a blackface scandal and sexual assault allegation charges, you know, that pushes back at this this moral high road or this idea of the you know moral outrage or, or having kind of the moral high ground. But we also know that you know sexual assault and uh, wearing blackface and engaging in kind of racist and, and uh, disrespectful acts um, doesn't have a, a partisan bent, that it's actually a bipartisan endeavor. Uh, we should have, you know, it's been clear there's a long history of this uh, in, in both political parties. What's different, however, is the way in which uh, 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 Democrats more generally have addressed this. We we saw this again during the Me Too movement, where there was explicit calling out. And I think part of what you are beginning to see, particularly around issues of sexual assault and Me Too, is that Democrats are being consistent in calling for investigations and in calling and saying, you know, I believe, I believe women. So we are seeing that, while they're also trying to be sensitive to, you know, what it takes to maintain power. With something like Ralph Northam and with blackface, that has become a far more trickier, uh, a far more trickier question, particularly once the Fairfax accusations emerge. So before there was any, you know, doubt that uh, about replacements, uh, it was almost a pretty uh, natural for Democrats to say Northam needs to step down and uh, Northam needs to resign. Now we're seeing a pulling back on that uh, a little bit because uh, of the reality of what happens if all of the people, you know, all of the people involved in these scandals resign uh, in terms of ceding power. But there's also wrestling with, you know, the very, the very real reality that the Democratic Party has based its uh, outward appearance on respect for minority rights, uh, respect for women's rights. And well. let me ask Eugene about that outward appearance. You've been talking to voters in Virginia. The big question here is, is there room for forgiveness, right? Will Virginia voters, will other Democrats look at these folks and say, okay, there can be a place for you in the party? What are they telling you, voters there? Yeah, and this is a perfect opportunity to remind people that black Americans are not a monolith. And so I've spoken to different black Americans in Virginia who are responding differently. Some would have loved to see Northam leave immediately. Others are more aware uh, that perhaps this is something that happened 30 years ago and that's not where he is right now. Others are deeply concerned about losing power to the GOP and having someone uh, at the top of Virginia politics who is more in line with Donald Trump than opposed from Donald Trump and the real implications that that will have on their uh, ability to live the lives that they believe they should have. But I think what people are starting to realize in ways that maybe we didn't see discussed last year or the years before is how significant the ramifications of having an automatically you're out approach to issues related to racism, related to sexual violence and other concerning problematic issues could be when it comes to public policy. How do you think, Eugene, that this complicates Democrats' future efforts to, to make that case to voters in Virginia and beyond? It's going to be really difficult to consistently uh, 
argue that you are the party of diversity and marginalized communities um, and that you're a much better party than the party on the other side of the aisle when some of your most prominent faces have this as part of their narrative and seem not to have responded immediately in a way that uh, appeased the, the constituents uh, that put them in office. I think it's worth pointing out that uh, black lawmakers in the Virginia legislature said they've lost confidence uh, in Northam's ability to leave. And that sends a message to the people who put them in power, um, hoping that they can improve their lives for all Virginians. Story is fast evolving. We'll continue to follow it here. Eugene Scott and Leah wright Regora. thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you. The Trump 